why did you and Donho uh, write it in the first place? Well, there's, it seemed to us that there was a, there was a gap in the field that, that uh, when Skinner sort of started the field of behavior analysis, he, uh, he made the point that uh, uh, behavior is a subject matter in its own right and it's orderly and it's at its own level. And you don't need to uh, uh, explain it in terms of physiological processes that underlie the behavior. Uh, that indeed the behavior is the result of these physiological processes, but there's order at the at the behavioral level, and uh, and and so the field of behavior analysis sort of uh, went on from there without worrying about the underlying physiology. And Skinner's point was that the physiology is not well known enough to really add any shed any light on the behavioral processes that you can go directly to the behavior. Uh, but by the 1990s or so, quite a bit had been known about the physiology of behavior. And so we thought it was a good idea to integrate um, rather superficially, I must say, what, what is known about uh, the physiology of reinforcement and uh, blend it in with the uh, behavioral principles so that we have a, a sort of a, a bigger uh, view of what, what the what the behavior of an organism is and the physiology of the organism together, uh, making a more complete account. And Skinner was all in favor of that. He just thought it was premature. Yeah. And in the 1930s, it was premature. But in addition to that, we wanted to go beyond simply uh, physiology and behavior, but to talk about all the domains of psychology that have been kind of relegated to special disciplines like cognitive psychology that um, uh, has Cognitive psychology is largely, well, not largely, it's explicitly rejected uh, behavioral processes as, a, as an important variable in complex behavior. And we thought that was just absolutely wrong. And it, I mean, it is, it's dead wrong. Uh, so uh, we felt as though behavior analysts had not done enough to uh, explain the relationship between basic processes and complex behavior. Can so, you, can you give an example of maybe something that you learned? There's like a good nugget that we could share with people as like how those things are connected. You can execute an operant response uh, with your nose, your finger, your elbow, your toe. That is, if there's a if, if there's a button on the wall that will deliver uh, delicious food or sexy women or something, and you uh, uh, and pushing that button will deliver it. Um, there's all kinds of ways you can push the button, but no matter which way you do it, that is if you touch it with your finger or you touch it with your elbow, uh, that response will be reinforced. It will become stronger on subsequent occasions. Um, and the mystery is, how the hell does the nervous system know, so to speak, that you've touched it with your elbow and not with your finger or not with your big toe or not with your nose? So it seems as though the nervous system has to be poised to strike and implement reinforcement. Uh, uh, no, well, it doesn't not only seems to be, it is true that the nervous system is poised to strike no matter what the behavior is. And the question is, how can that be? Because it seems as though there has to be an executive up there who's uh, watching all the, uh, the behavior and the things that are going on around in the environment and, and uh, making executive decisions about where to deliver reinforcement. And we stumbled on the ridiculously parsimonious idea that reinforcement goes everywhere. So when, when the delicious food hits the palate, a reinforcement signal goes out broadcast to, when I say broadcast, I don't mean literally everywhere, but to everywhere relevant, uh, every, everywhere that could be, any, any behavior that could be potentiated this time uh, is, um, sent this reinforcement signal. But reinforcement only works if that particular system has been active. So in other words, there's a little latency. If I press something with my finger, the motor neurons that uh, implement finger movement have just been firing like crazy because finger movement is uh, necessary to get the operant response on. If I do it with my big toe, my big toe neurons are firing like crazy. So it's a combination of uh, reinforcement everywhere, but it only works if you've just been uh, firing. And it turns out that that's true within the margin of 
here. Uh, so, so reinforcement is an, an absurdly parsimonious mechanism at the physiological level. Well, parsimonious, it's wasteful in the sense that you're sending all this dopamine all over the place, uh, most of which is wasted, but it's, it's cheap. It's like throwing pennies out and one of them happens to land in a parking meter and, and, uh, and, and you, yeah, and it works. So, so, um, it's a cheap way to get what you want or for, for natural selection to, 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 to implement reinforcement. Um, whereas if, uh, natural selection had to figure out how does the brain know where, which responses is relevant and, 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 and send a little packet with a little messenger off to that particular spot, it would require this complex apparatus to implement. So anyway, we have a very simple parsimonious mechanism that implements reinforcement. Uh, and it turns out that it's largely correct. So we thought this was uh, a terrific blow for parsimony and the integration of simple mechanisms and explain it back into what Skinner was kind of alluding to yeah. it might be possible, right? Yeah. Yeah. All right. So now it's your turn. Like, share, subscribe. It actually makes a difference. And if you can head over to patreon.com backslash the daily BA, the links down below, please help support this channel. It's ran and fueled by people just like you. There's over 160 people and we have a long ways to go to make this sustainable. That's your daily BA.